How's it going, my bakers? Hope your day is going great so far. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're making cold fermented, crunchy Thai bread breakfast rolls. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. We have made this kind of bread before, in loaf form. But back then, I was all about kneading and room temperature fermentation. Now has come the time to update the recipe. Instead of kneading, we'll just perform one simple fold and we'll do the final proof in the fridge. It simplifies the recipe, it improves the flavor because of the long cold fermentation and it makes it an ideal breakfast bake because all you need to do in the morning is preheat the oven and bake these buns and then you can use them to make some delicious breakfast sandwiches. They have a super soft interior and a crunchy crust and they will go down well with any filling that you like. So let's get right to it and see how they're made. Let's start with the ingredients. For the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, water, yeast, salt, a little bit of sugar, an egg and some butter. Now for the crunchy topping, we'll need some rice flour, some water, a bit of sugar, a bit of salt, some oil. I'm using olive oil, but commonly toasted sesame oil is used actually. And last but not least, we'll need some yeast. Make sure you're using rice flour, not ground rice powder. Ground rice powder is too coarse. I've tried to use it before, it doesn't work. So get your hands on this stuff if you want to make these rolls properly. Moving on to the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, temperature probe, brush and a whisk. And with all that out of the way, let's start making our dough. First things first is temperature control. My kitchen is around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And we want the final dough temperature to be around the same. That's why we need slightly cooler water to make this happen. If you want to see an in-depth video about no-need dough temperature control, you can find one in the Principles of Baking playlist. No-need bread dough temperature control works slightly differently because the dough doesn't warm up as much since we're not kneading it. Right, moving on. In a large bowl, combine the water, the yeast, the salt, the sugar, the egg and the butter. I have melted the butter to make it easier to mix in. Make sure that the butter is not crazy hot because it will increase the final dough temperature. Mix the ingredients well. You want to dissolve the salt and sugar completely and hydrate the yeast. Once everything is nicely mixed, add the final ingredient, the bread flour. Grab your dough scraper and mix it to a dough. It will be quite sticky and loose, but don't get discouraged. That's exactly how it should be. Wet your hands with water when you're handling sticky dough like this. It makes the job a lot easier and less messy. My dough came out slightly warmer at around 26 degrees Celsius or 79 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's fine. I'll just cut the fermentation time down to 25 minutes. After the first 25 minutes of fermentation, we must perform a fold. In a recipe like this, folding replaces kneading. As we fold the dough, we stretch the gluten and reorganize it. And the dough becomes nice and tight. It's still a little bit sticky, so dust it with flour. Tip it out on the table with a smooth side down, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle, until you have a nice tight dough ball. Then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it a bit more against the table, and pop it back into the bowl with the smooth side facing up. Cover it up and let it ferment for another 25 minutes. Bulk fermentation only takes around 50 to 60 minutes. At this point, we can make the topping. In a small bowl, combine the salt, sugar, yeast, oil and water. Mix well to dissolve all the ingredients. Then, add the rice flour and mix it to a paste. Leave that on the side to start fermenting, then weigh your dough bowl and divide it into four equal pieces and then pre-shape it. And while I'm doing that, let me give you a suggestion. Now, these rolls are pretty soft as they are. But if you know the scalding method, then you know that they could be even softer. So what I would say is that if you're going to bake them and eat them right away, then don't worry about scalding, because they will be super soft in the morning. But if you want to bake them and keep them for longer and eat them later, then you could scald around 20% of the total flour. If you're not familiar with this technique, you can find a full video about it in the Principles of Baking playlist. Right back to the dough balls. Pre-shaping done, I'm not going to cover them up because they only need 15 minutes resting. It's not nearly enough time for them to dry out. After the resting stage, we can perform the final shaping. And it works exactly the same way as the fold and the pre-shaping step. Place the dough ball on the table with the smooth side down, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach point where it started, then flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, and finally you can pick it up and pinch the seam together at the bottom. That's your shaping done. Now we can clean down the mess and continue by applying the topping paste. Brush it on in a nice thick layer. I have adjusted the recipe so you have more topping paste to use. Because when I converted this recipe from a loaf to rolls, I forgot to account for the larger surface area. So my topping will be slightly thinner than yours. Okay, these bad boys are ready for final proofing. We must cover them, but we want to avoid anything touching the paste. 
So here's one option, put some cups on the tray and then use some cling film. It will elevate it and prevent it from sticking to the rolls. Alternatively, you can use another baking tray. The one I have here is not quite deep enough, so it's not going to work. So here's what I'm going to use, my Lloyd's Pans pizza pans. The two of them will fit perfectly over this tray. So you know, use whatever you have, improvise. All we're trying to do is preventing the topping from drying out too much, because these bad boys will be in the fridge for quite some time. Ferment them for around 12 to 24 hours. On the next day, preheat the oven, 180 degrees Celsius, fan on, and that is 355 Fahrenheit. Take the rolls out of the fridge and leave them to warm up and rise a little bit more while the oven is preheating. This will make them even lighter and softer. Around 30 minutes should do it. They're not gonna puff up massively, but they'll get a bit of a head start. If you ever see any large bubbles forming on your loaves or on your rolls, you can pop them. Because sometimes if you leave a bubble, it blows up as it bakes and it can ruin the look of the loaf or the roll. A probe is the perfect tool for popping them. Okay, these bad boys are finally ready for the oven. They will take around 20 minutes to fully bake. And if your oven doesn't have a fan, turn it up to 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to use the fan when I'm baking rolls because it helps the crust color more evenly. But however you bake them, once they're nicely golden brown all over, they're ready. All you need to do now is leave them to cool down just slightly and then tuck in. I was already dreaming about massive bacon sandwiches even before I started filming the video. So as I was buying ingredients for the recipe, I also got some nice smoked streaky bacon. And then I realized there's no turning back, so I grabbed some cheese as well. And once I had my rolls ready, I could make a filthy breakfast sandwich for myself. With four slices of cheese, countless pieces of smoked bacon and an omelette to top it all. My usual breakfast consists of oatmeal and fruit 99% of the time. But sometimes I just can't control myself. It's worth it though, don't get me wrong. But as I said earlier, this bread will go well with anything. It's just a nice vessel for your favorite fillings. After this video, we'll take a little break from these white flour bakes. And we'll try some alternative grains like spelt, einkorn and rye. I have quite a few videos lined up already. The next couple of months will be all about the healthier side of baking. There will be quite a few new and interesting things to learn for us. But if you're not a big fan of rye or whole grains, then don't forget that there are around 300 recipes on this channel already. So you'll pretty much never run out of new things to bake. And while I'm here, let me remind you about our Flickr group. It is a great place for sharing pictures of your bakes with like-minded people. It was created for all of you. So check it out, it's linked in the video description below. So what do you think this recipe? And what is your favorite breakfast bake? Let me know down in the comments. You want to see more ideas like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.